to support some of what some was saying is number one, every one of us, each one of us is expected to act as per the resources that Paul was giving you. That's what is supposed to happen, right? And I want to confess some that, you know, I'm not good at what he does. You know, mashallah, organizes, gets everything running and all that. That's not my speciality, it's not my resource. But I can teach. Right? This is what I can do to bring. So each one of us is expected to act as per the resources that always granting you. And this is what we're talking about. Look at the bounties that Allah has given you, and are you using them correctly? Right? There are people who are very good uh, going online and writing articles and all that. That's what you're supposed to do. So act as per your resources. That's very important. Number two, what you're saying again, is what we were talking about the talk, is these are means. That's what the external externalities that he's talking about. These are means. And what he said is, you know, are we just going to have the means constantly dictating how we are faring in life? Right? So that's happened. Oh my God. No, it's not what you're saying. That's happened. So what you're doing is every time the means are brought as a form of testing, you succumb. You're not growing from the means. So you have misunderstood. And we say that the means are inevitable. They will always be there throughout your lifetime until you leave this world. They will always be there to test you and to bring that, you know, the best out of you. Number three, what I said very early at the beginning of this talk is, Allah says, فَمَنْ تَعْلِيَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ if you, if you follow this guidance, there should be no fear and no sorrow. So if now we're all retreating into a corner in a state of fear, then something is not right. right? And we say, you know, part of, if you look at the program, how we can face, you know, the falsehood and the challenges with equanimity. How can we face this thing? I was explaining something, I think, just first of all, every day. And I said, you know, it was inevitable that the Western world was going to encroach into the Muslim world. That's, you couldn't have stopped that. We were in decline, you know, we were going down, it was all messed up, they were going to come in, they were going to have a lot of control of our lands, all those, that was going to happen. Why? That's the question, right? So it was not going to be uh, uh, unstoppable, it was going to come. What was the problem? Right? If these things were going to come into our world, then what happened? And the whole problem is we needed some of these things. We needed the technology, right? We needed maybe even their own systems of education and things like that. Maybe we thought we could see something be good or better than what we had. So we were going to embrace all of that. The problem was how do we embrace these things without being corrupted? Right? How do we embrace them without them corrupting our nature? So if we knew the human nature, if we kept preserving that knowledge, we would have a problem facing these things. Right? And that's what I say. The, the, the political, the economical, the education. And I was, I was to tell my students at the madrasa, go to school, make sure you don't fail. Because don't go to a place for 12 years and fail. Right, it's a waste of time. Just go and become a learn how to cook. Really, you can get better jobs. Just ask your mom to teach you how to cook if she's a good cook. Why go to, to for 12 years and then fail? Really, and although the system wants you to go in because it chooses those it wants, but it's a shame. You know, if you're having a what we say, he said earlier on, if you're having an easy life, you have your you know the school is free by the way anyway. So it is an easy life compared to, you know, where we come from, Africa or Asia or, you know, where you, you have to pay. So it's, it's an easy life. You can go and study and all that. Make sure you don't fail. 
So you're gonna, these things are inevitable, but make sure they don't corrupt you. And how do you do that? Know yourself. Know the human nature. Okay? So if we want guidance, la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. It won't bring us down. We will understand it. We will know where it's coming from. And we will know how to behave. And how are we going to know how to behave? If we are growing. When you grow, really, you move from a general purpose of your life to specific purpose of your life. That's what happens. You will start being taught exactly what you are supposed to do in this world. Not they or we, you. Because Allah will teach you, the, you know, this is your gifts. This is what I've given you. Now you use it properly. And I've said this to a few, a few people who I see they have certain gifts. And I have told them, look, you're not using your gifts correctly. You just think it's for people to say you're a good person. Which you are, but that's not what you're given this for. Because some of us really struggle to be good people. <laughs> and then Allah makes it easy for you. And you think, I'm just blessed. No. There is a reason why that's been made easy for you. Just like there's a reason why we are here. If we just came here for the money, we are failed. And we said, yeah, we can excuse our parents if that's what brought them. But we are passing down the same fikr. So when we are growing, we are going to learn these specific purposes in our lives. And what happens? We stop loitering all over the place. Yeah, Mahuna, right? Really, I'm telling you, when you are growing, you can spend five to six hours just by yourself. What do I mean by that? Rasulullah he said, the believer is the one who, when he or she is with people, benefits them. And when he or she is by herself for himself, is self-sufficient. He's self-sufficient. Meaning he doesn't need that. Doesn't need TV. He's self-sufficient. But when he's with people, they derive benefit from them. Now you look at us. I say, I want to spend time by myself. What do I do? I'm watching movies, I'm watching TV, I'm on the phone. Am I really spending, is that self-sufficiency? It's not. So when you're growing, you know, we were having a conversation just now and somebody said, you know, our children are caught up in TV. And I said, I can understand it perfectly well. Right? Because number one, we are all looking for something, but we don't know what we are looking for. And we Muslims suffer. We thought, well, we are Muslims. We are supposed to be the happiest people on earth. And then we just realizing we have so many crises in, in our own houses, in our relations. And we go, well, we are praying. How come we are not the happiest people on earth? We believe. How come we are not? And we've been told we are going to paradise. But how come we are not? Because we don't know exactly what we are looking for. Right? So we are all just doing things out there. But if we realize that all these things are a means to what we are looking for, it's here. Tranquility. Peace. That's what we're looking for. Now, when we go into that state, I assure you, right, and we know some of our brothers, mashallah, don't even have a TV in the house for years and years. And when you tell people, like, no, mashallah, we know them. They're our inspiration, right? So you can do without it. Like I said, the experiencer has been given what is not beneficial. So what I'm saying, I'm not blaming people for watching TV. We have all done that. We've all gone through that. But I believe, seriously, when you're growing, you will be freed of these things because you'll only become Abdullah. You will become Abdullah. And these things, their power in you will be diminished. They will just keep... You know, that's what will happen. It will be like, you know, the, the, the storage, and this one has been stored like seventh floor down underground, so it's not coming up. And this is the nature of the soul. You know, when you make toba for your sins, the soul is not wiped off from the soul. The soul records, it's like a hard drive. That's why Allah says on Yawm al Qiyamah, Yawm al Tajidu kulu nafsin ma'amilat min khayrin wa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adwa'adw
ما يوم تقول كل مسلم ما عملت آه آه من خير ومن سوء. You will find both. Why? Because it's told. But that which is bad, when you repenting, it, it's the power is it's not waning. That's what happens. Now, what you don't want to do is try and you know challenge yourself to bring it back, because you might just jump from seventh floor to first floor, <laughs> right? That's why I don't think you've conquered your shahwa, or you've conquered the desire for watching TV or this. No, it's always helping you, because you can just return it and you go back to square one, right? But that's the thing is, as we are growing, we will know what we are supposed to do, and we will be freed of that which enslaves us without benefit. Now, finally, I want to explain something very powerful here, right? Since the beginning of creation, when Iblis rebelled, what has happened since that day is every good thing is pursued by evil. That's the nature of the world now. Whatever you have of good, there's an evil behind it wanting to take it away from you. Now realize Allah has given it to you. But the protection of that good is upon you. You understand? Allah will help you in protecting it, but you have to do what you are supposed to do. Now isn't it amazing? We have beautiful things in our houses and we add security in the house. Right? So how come the things that Allah gives us, we don't think of protecting it? Right? And we can use the, uh, the illustration of a king, you know, based in, in London, he's expanded his empire all the way to Manchester. So what does he do? He's going to build a garrison. Right? At Manchester. So there will be a big fort over there and garrison and, you know, walls or whatever. What is he saying? This is my kingdom, and if you want to take it from me, you have to start fighting me over there, in Manchester. In the meantime, they'll just be having their fun here, because we have enough room to keep living. The soldiers will do the fighting, so that's the protection. You have extended your empire and protected it. Now, almost Hanwath Allah has given you the good. Now, what do you have to do? You have to make it produce more good. And when it's producing, what do you have? An expansion, right? There is no king who would want to fight an enemy next to his own compound. You want to fight him very far off, right? Let's fight over there, not here. I don't want to bring the enemy too close. I want to keep him far. So what do we do? When we're doing the good action, always expanding it. And what happens now? If Shaitan wants to fight you, First of all, he has to deal with your shadow. Because your shadow is expanded all the way to there. So you have enough room to keep operating. Now, if we are finding we don't have expansion, and we have constriction, what does that mean? You don't have any good to be expanded. It's not that Allah doesn't want to expand. He has said, if you do one, I'll give you ten. So either you don't have enough, you don't have any good to be expanded, or the good you have for expansion is still paying back your debts. Right? You want to take the next loan from the bank, they're like, you haven't finished paying the other one. So now there's nothing to be expanded. And this is the problem with the reward we get from our Matala. If we are corrupt inside of us, then what's happening? It's not even going outside. It's still dealing with our own inner conflict. Now we have to do more to attain that protection. Now what does Allah say about this? Ya yuwalladhina amanu isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu. All believers have patience and diwa and fortify. Build protections around what you have. That's your duty, not always fine with either. And when we do this, we have no idea how Allah is going to do this protection. But we are doing it. That's up to Him. We are doing what is necessary. And it comes in many ways. Seen and unseen. You have no idea. But it will be happening. 
Because that's his promise. Now, when we have situations like this, where we can just be attacked, things can be done to us, right? our lives can be destroyed, uh, our countries bombed, uh, you know, the, the Muslim countries over there just bombed. Uh, what, what's that telling you? There's a lack in protection. There's a lack in protection. But we always want to say the other, the other, the other. What does he say? Maybe we're here for the wrong reasons. Shah Abdul Hakim Mura recently in a talk he said, Muslims came to Britain and Europe, but did Islam come to Britain and Europe? Are we representing Islam as we should? Right? You're all going, we're all going through a system where we want to be just like the other. And money, drive cars, finance, right? That's all what we're all doing. So what happens when these things happen? We are now shocked. Well, what did you expect? That's what you were pursuing. Now it's coming back to us. You know, and there's no way that it's not painful to see that. And we can learn also something from, from what we have witnessed in the last few days. We have seen non-Muslims uniting in love and support for what has happened to fellow human beings. You know, and that's a lesson. We should stop generalizing human beings. You know, I'll tell you what, when Shaitan is fighting us, he's fighting us as human beings. That's not, this is our world, it's not their world. And if we just see the divisions, they take it from us. And he's got his people, I, when you're told, you read some statistics, they're very depressing, right? 1% of human beings own 50% of the world's wealth. That is so depressing. And yet we look at it like, yeah, it's normal. You mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give 1% of human beings 50% of the world's wealth? No, it's, something is wrong with us. That's not the way Allah expected it to go. He says in the Quran about the, 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 the wealth, Distributed amongst people. So that it's not just held amongst the rich, amongst you. I didn't say this is only for the rich. They're playing you. You know, you get eight people who want like what? One trillion, trillion something. How can that be? What's happened to us? So we are the ones losing it, and it's not them. So really, if we do what we're supposed to do, Allah will protect us. But when it happens, it won't be because we are failed. It will be something we can embrace. That's when we can say, Ma qadar Allah, you know. But people know, you go and commit sins and sins and sins, and then you go to see a sheikh, and then, you know, you're not telling him the whole truth, and then he's saying, go and make tawbah and all that, and don't worry, this is Allah's decree. Come on. <laughs> You've just been committing sins all the time. What did you expect? Now stop blaming Allah. That's what he decreed for me. No, we know cause and effect. So when we look to ourselves, we're going to find solutions all the time. Allah will teach us, but we have to do that. We have to have this process of growth. And that way, what he said was perfectly true is, we don't need to jump on board in things blindly. And we don't need to have incessant conversations without doing anything. Really, we don't need to do that. You know, you get your own inspirations. Like, I'm going to fast and ask Allah to help people. Like, Rasulullah one morning he woke up and there was no food in his house. And he said, Ya Allah, I'm dedicating this day as a fast. And please use this fast to forgive my ummah. That's a wasila. You know, just use this fast to forgive my ummah. You can do that, do. It's better than just talking. Right? So we have ways if we grow. We really need to grow. We really need to do this. For our own sake. 
We are in a world, in an earth that is collapsing. What do we want our children to inherit? What do we want them to inherit? A place where there is no water? It's not them who are going to change it, it's us. And we have to change our ways. Really, um, just to finish this, I said at the beginning of this talk, people who are in front of us teaching and, you know, doing, we have to realize it's about transforming people. People are resources. Why am I saying that? We've spoken about the heart and what the heart is capable of. Okay? You know the hadith Sayyidina Umar and the Ram of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, when Sayyidina Umar is coming down one path and Shaitan is coming the same path, Shaitan runs away. Shaitan run, runs away. Why is that so? Why did this Umar see Shaitan coming? That's not what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying. Does he know this is Shaitan coming? Why is that so? Because the heart of Sayyidina Umar, the energy coming out of him and the light, will shatter shaitan if he comes into the vicinity. So shaitan will not even dare, said Omar. He won't even dare. So shaitan will not plan and plot against you when you're in that state. And this is the heart of the Prophet His heart was so powerful that his enemies would fear him from a distance of one month. So we have the power in us to make these changes. But we need to do that. We need to move from being told the same things we're doing or just the fitna and move to experiential and into growing. We need to do that. That's the message you need to take out. Start with yourselves and then, you know, you spread it out. <laughs>